Morning, folks. Morning, peeps. Hey, I got I got to do an instructional video, a professional instructional video, if you can handle that. Professional. Um, what I'm going to show you how to do. This is going to be. Obviously, I'm in the shop. I'm at my messy old table, but we're going to change out solenoids on a valve bank. This is a K170 valve, Parker valve, which every Ponzi, every Ponza has. Every, uh, there's, I think there's a 90 and a 170. John Deere uses, uh, Ponza uses, everybody know basically a lot of valve banks are the same. And when you get erratic behavior on functions and you're talking to your tech support guy and he's going to tell you to go unplug wires and plug wires in on these coils, solenoids he's referring to these okay so I have this valve section here that we had to replace a couple of weeks ago um, on a machine so I mocked up two old ones and I'm going to show you what we're going to do and I'm going to be a little bit Mike-ish in other words I'm going to tell you the way it is so it should be get you focused this is basically what we're dealing with you now you're gonna have you know eight slabs here all together your hoses are all gonna be on here everything is gonna be in your way and it's gonna be filthy filthy I say so what you need most importantly is a can of brake clean or two or three or whatever and what you're gonna do is and I don't I have the old ones right here I'll put them in there I'm not a little too prepared but number one you're gonna break clean this whole area because you remember dirt is your enemy in hydraulics it's terrible we don't want any mind you any specks of dirt getting into them holes and <clears throat> excuse me you're gonna need a three millimeter I like a t-wrench because usually these things are so been in there from so long that this gives you a good snap when you you, you torque it and it'll they'll snap loose or you can use a ball uh, I wouldn't use a ball in socket a long extension um, with a three millimeter because the dead ball end has a tendency to snap off down in there because you need to give these a good twist -o. Um My other favorite once I break them loose is these things They are a What are they hex pros I think I got these through Lawson at one time and so when you're in here My hand out of the way you can manipulate this. I actually left one in a machine just recently because I dropped it because it was slippery. It's in the belly pan of a S15 Bison. So, anyway, so you can go like this when your restricted movement is long enough. Okay, so moving on. First thing you're going to which slab. Once you establish that, it's pretty easy because we just disconnect the wires when we have that. Or you follow the lines. It's or the guy you have a map in your book that tells you which slab it is from one end or the other. So if you're instructed to change a solenoid and you're out in the field by yourself and you're the operator, the owner of the machine, this is pretty nonchalant stuff. But yet there's a few quirks that need to be followed, a few little tips. So number one, remove your wire. Now if you look on these connectors, there is a spring. That's what locks it on. So basically you just push on that spring, that little wire thing, and you pull it off. Take your wires off to the side. Make sure they are, you know which one they go in. Okay, so then when I, what I do is you turn the, the other thing you do is if your machine has a vacuum, Turn the vacuum on to keep the oil from pouring out of these holes. Um, 
and get your other ones ready. And what I mean by that is they'll come in a nice baggie here like this. I'll show you exactly how they come because there's some misleading things here that can throw a guy off. Okay, it's identical to this. It's protected here, it's protected here. Now, in this bag also, with every coil, oh, there's one missing. Uh-oh. Yeah, this happens too. They give you directions, of course, and it's in some other language. Oh, there's English on the bottom. Here's the most important part. If you can read that, it says, Move original calibrated orifice washer to the new solenoid. If orifice washer is missing, order a new one to the product configuration. Use of the supplied orifice washer can cause reduced maneuverability. Okay, what they're saying is, oh, it's in there. It was just stuck. There it is. So every solenoid comes protected. It comes with two new screws. You always want to use the new screws, always. And it comes with what I call, we all call the hat or the top hat, but it's actually an orifice. And you see how giant the hole is? I can't show you one because every time we change one, the original one stays in that valve. But I will demonstrate. It'll be snapped on just like this onto the end. So what you need to do once you let's go ahead and remove these two as if we just are are getting going here. And we're gonna pretend because we have to. You have to wiggle these out. Usually when they're the old ones will come out pretty easy because the O-rings are so shrunk down. Okay, there will be a, a orifice on the end of this one that's original to that valve section. It's specific. So you have to take, I take a little pliers like this and I just wiggle it, pop it off. Set this one down to the side, pop it on to the new one. Okay, that one that comes in the bag is, is, don't ask me why they send them. I guess because if you have to have one, whatever it restricts the flow you need the original one in that that comes out on here and like I said these are old so we don't have them to demonstrate they're gone they're in the valve that we replaced this into so for the sake of demonstration I'm gonna put this one in and you're gonna see this one is sitting up quite a bit because it's the o-rings are a lot better fit these O-rings are shot. And technically, and like I said, you're going to have all these slabs here, so sometimes you'll have to put a little grease on that screw or, or get it in there to hold into your, the outfill out. I'll put a little grease or something on there if you can't reach and get them down in there. Line them up. It's that simple. Obviously, it's more difficult if you're standing on the back of a machine. But what will happen is you'll see that you can force this down, but it won't want to stay very well. So you need to be careful when you're putting that in. Tighten a little bit on this side. Tighten a little bit on this side. You'll see it draw in. Just work it down a quarter turn at a time, half turn, whatever, and you'll seat them O-rings real nice. And like I said, the, the cleanliness is imperative. On a this being a new block, it's super clean for like. 
demonstration purposes, but you need to take that brake clean and you need to spray all around these where these openings and even if you got to take a little screwdriver and scrape all the dirt because there's going to be dirt and actually on some I think it's the K90s like on the Fabtex this whole valve bank will be upside down and you have to do this by feel upside down or you take the whole block off and put it on the bench and do it so I got one installed and that's what I'm going to do Basically, and all you got to do is snug them puppies up. You don't have to over tighten them Just snug them up. That's it So that's basically how to change a solenoid on a valve bank slab And what I was saying before when you get a tight one, I'll tighten that right up You want to give them things a good you hear that snap Oh, and, and the brake clean, make sure you get in the heads of these things. <clears throat> Excuse me. And pick that crap out because if you don't get your tool in far enough, you're going to strip that head out and then you're going to be screwed. Literally. And make sure your tool goes in all the way and give it a little snap. So that's basically it. And just to refresh, you want to. Like I said, this one will come with every one of these bags with your parts in it will come with that hat that I call the orifice that you don't need. You see it right there. You have to remove the one from the old solenoid that doesn't work with a little pliers or a little, I use it sometimes all I got is my little snap on screwdriver in my hand, in my pocket. And I'll pop that off and pop it onto the new one. And sometimes they're even in the hole. And so that little screwdriver that you got from the Snap on guy or the Matco guy with the magnet on the end really comes in handy when you're messing with the valve here. Especially when you drop these little screws too. So it is these are hard to find and hard to see and hard to work with when you got old hands. But I'll show you down inside the hole what I mean. When I get this screw out. I don't take that cap off until I'm ready to put the new one on unless it's in your way. That's how nice and tight that new one fits. You really got to work it to get it back out of there. Of course, that'll be the end of my video because I'm... <clears throat> there it is. Okay, so I'm going to remove that other one before it goes back in the bag. Just pop it off. Because remember, I'll say it again. You need to use the original one that comes out of that hole, but I'll show you what happens. Sometimes the old solenoids are so bad that that hat, that orifice will be laying down in the hole. And of course now I don't have a magnet to pick it out of there. But anyways, you get the idea. This is one of the old ones that I just took out of one. And throw these away. Don't try to save them. Throw them away. They're not going to work. They're not working now. And it's always wise to change both of them on the same valve. Buy both of them. I'm going to put this all back in the bag where it belongs. So keep it nice and clean. And that's basically it. I'm going to get my orifice out of there. And, uh, remember, I am working on a bench. So that's it. So if you get erratic behavior on some of your functions, and like I said, the tech guy says, hey, you need to send, you need to change solenoids, you can do it yourself. It's not that big a deal. Um, brake clean, three millimeter, three millimeter of some sort, a little handy pick screwdriver, brake clean, 
Um, and you got to know how to take those wires off the connectors and keep them in order. And even if you put them back on in the wrong order, your function is going to be wrong in the cab. So you just come back out and switch them around. Just do one at a time, one section at a time. Keep yourself out of trouble. So, with that, and always use the new screws. Save the get next guy a little bit of headache. So that's what I got. Take care of this stuff. And uh, she'll take care of you. Don't drop any dirt in them holes. Anything. The orifices are too small. And, and you know that's a rule. That's the religious practice of uh, hydraulics. Dirt doesn't belong in hydraulics. Nothing does other than the hydraulic fluid. So, okay, that's it. That's all I got. Questions and comments below, and and uh, remember to hit the thumbs up. Tell your friends to subscribe. I'm pushing 2,000 here. Ooh, big number. Maybe I'll give something away. So tell all your buddies and whatnot, and we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Apply it out in the field. You can save yourself a little bit of... You can do it. It's not that big a deal. Um, you can always hire somebody to do it, too, if that's the way it goes. But if you want to do it yourself, that's how you do it. Remember that orifice always has to go with, stay in that hole. It has to stay in that hole on the new solenoid, coil, whatever. And you know there are differences. The only differences I think in most coils are the voltage. These are all marked 24 volt. The old Fabtex and stuff ran 12 volts. So you can't use a 12 volt in a 24 volt system. And vice versa. So, okay, take care. Enough of me. See you, bye.